Ben Bradley. Thank you, Chair. Uh, it's safe to say this hasn't been a debate I've shied away from, and it's something that sparks a lot of interest from our constituents too. So I'm going to fly through a, a few things. I'm sure colleagues know I could speak about identity politics for hours, but in short, it baffles me that the BBC is spending £100 million on diversity whilst at the same time ditching regional news in order to save £25 million. I think this is one of the clearest indicators that it's out of touch. So the government's focusing on reaching out to communities across the country, but sometimes it feels like the BBC have forgotten that other places exist outside of London, places that are actually different. And I don't think that the programming represents the full range of thoughts and values that are out there. In spending this 100 million on diversity of physical characteristics, they seemingly have no plan to combat the lack of diversity of experience, of geography, and diversity of thought. We know that our state institutions can suffer from this. Being based in London inevitably leads to recruiting a middle-class metropolitan demographic. But as far as I can see, this still isn't a priority for the BBC. I struggle to see how they can represent working class towns like Mansfield and Warsaw if it scraps regional teams and runs the whole thing from London. And given the choice between that diversity budget or regional news, I think the vast majority would take the latter. I honestly don't think, contrary to what some say, they are deliberately biased in their content. I just think they have a tunnel vision based on a lack of genuine diversity uh, of experience and background in their teams because they follow the wrong priorities on things like recruitment. I also think, frankly, it's impossible to maintain the veil of impartiality in the 21st century in a Twitter world where news is so instant and constant that perhaps we should just stop trying to pretend that it can be done. The license fee model isn't sustainable in the long term and with the rise of new technology it's outdated it made sense back in the day when there were three or four channels and government subsidy was vital but nowadays there is no need for taxpayer funded media we're spoiled for choice with a myriad of services to choose from people should have the choice whether to pay and watch bbc content rather than being criminalized and on that point the impact of criminalizing the fee on our courts is massive data last year showed that a third of all women's criminal convictions are for evading the license fee why are we clogging up our courts with issues like this instead of putting time and money into seeking justice for those uh, against those who pose a threat to our society? I could talk about presented salaries or fees with over 75s if I had time. Whilst my speech probably hasn't reflected this, I do want to see the BBC succeed and I'm hopeful that it can correct many of the problems it's created for itself. But I think the best way to help it do that is to set it free, to make it compete in the market and effectively force it to deliver what the market wants rather than what the BBC wants. They create some absolutely fantastic content. I was hooked on Peaky Blinders. I bought the Grandad Collar shirts. It took all of my strength not to buy a flat cap. That kind of programming will sell. It will compete on the market and make money. And in a post-license fee world, the BBC can seek an audience and income from the whole world, not just from UK taxpayers. That will make it leaner and fitter and make it better. Uh, and in my view, the sooner that happens, the better. Thank you, Chair.